Hello, and welcome to Clea's World. I am Clea Mechiarico, and today I would like to share with you more of the information I received from the 25th dimension in my last QHHT hypnosis session. I will uh, read it from a transcript, and when I refer to Carolyn, she's the hypnotist, and she was asking me questions I prepared in advance of the session. And when I say me, I'm referring to myself under hypnosis, which means that the answers are coming from a 25th dimension. But before I move forward, I would like to ask you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And please do give a like to this video because it really helps me. And leave me a comment below to let me know if this information resonates with you. I'll always like to read your comments. I reply to all of them. I just enjoy the interaction. So thank you in advance for that. All right, I'm gonna start reading here. We're gonna have, if you've seen my last video, it was a little bit, it was all of it was about what's been going on behind the scenes in a 3D uh, way <laughs> in, in our, uh, in, on this actual planet. And, uh, and I have a little bit of more of that today, but I also have the final messages. This was the last bit of the hypnosis session of this particular hypnosis session. So I have some final messages from the 25th for us that they want to share with us. All right, so here we go. Carolyn. Have the three centers of power of the dark in 3D, the Vatican, the city of London, and Washington, D.C., been taken over by the White Hats? Me. So they have been cleared out of a lot of the dark. They've not, they're not completely light and light controlled right now, but they, basically a lot of it is dismantled. They're not nearly as dark as they were. Again, we're not gonna finish. We're not gonna have time to finish this work. Just because it's such huge work, they were pit these places. Carolyn, is the Pope gone? Me. Yeah, the Pope has been gone for a while. Carolyn, will there be time to publicly announce that the 2020 US, um, we cannot use the actual word because again, English is dangerous these days. <laughs> but basically those uh, things where people show up to, uh, uh, decide who they're going to be ruled by <laughs> for the next four years. Um, so will it be publicly announced that they were rigged, that the last uh, was rigged? And now we're only asking about that. I have always believed all of them were rigged because there is no chance in hell that normal people would pick these, these people who prove, like in Italy, we've had the same uh, people over and over for like 20, 30 years. There is no way, no way. Uh, all right, so will, will there be time for a public announcement of what actually went on before we leave? Me, there would be time, but the white hats are not interested anymore. The interest in that has fizzled. We're kind of come to grips with the fact that nobody's paying attention anymore. There's no need. Nobody's even interested in the current administration. It's like it doesn't even exist already. So there is really no point. So what? If we announce it, what do we do? Then we have to deal. We have to put our focus on creating something new. We have a couple of months here. We have two or three months. What? We're not interested in this. So no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna upset because we don't want to focus on that anymore. We don't want to know, sorry. We don't want to now focus on that. What are we gonna do next? How are we gonna set it up? How are we gonna change it? Nobody wants to focus on that anymore. What we're focused on is moving out of here. And the white hats are doing a lot of the work of clearing out people. So this is just not interesting. It's not a priority anymore. And that kind of made sense to me because I was wondering, I'm like, I knew all these um, processes were going on, all these uh, court uh, battles, et cetera. And then all of a sudden I've heard nothing about it anymore. You know, so yeah, moving on. <laughs> Carolyn. Are there aliens who are part of the White Hats Alliance or helping the White Hats? Me. Yeah, they're helping. Yes. Carolyn, is looking glass technology real and what does it do? Sorry, guys. I just had something pop up on my computer and I can't read anymore. Here we go. We're back. Is looking glass technology real and what does it do? Me. So looking glass technology is is something, it's basically people that have technology that can predict certain things. But again, we know technology is not all knowing. And there are people really that are using their intuition. They think that by looking in here, they can see certain things. 
sometimes they're they're tapping in and so it's always like you know this we know this by now it's never the technology right is what we expect to see out of technology so the question is are there ways are there people who have ways of predicting the future yes and no meaning that they think they are some of the things they're create they are creating i mean all the things that are invisible are being created by essences but they think that they are seeing these things and predicting these things so they take certain actions and they change the outcome really what are they doing they're playing with our power of manifestation and we can change the outcome of things depending on our actions and our expectations and our intentions so i mean is it real i mean it's as real as it's going to get on this holographic planet and we're laughing I mean, but no, but it doesn't work. And the better question is, does it work as advertised or as we're told that it works? It does not really. It's a combination of, even if you want to look at it from this perspective, from a 3D perspective, this combination of the human using the, te the technology. And Claire is not aware of the details, but basically what we're telling her is that it's a thing where you actually need a particular type of person to look at. And really it's the person who's then getting the information, but because they think that it's the machine giving it to them, they're okay connecting and saying, okay, this is what could happen. But the machinery is very simple and they can make mistakes. Of course, they can always make mistakes. They're trying to predict what people will do, what essences will do. That's not easy to do because you can't. The essence can change its mind at any time. Again, they're working in the field of Intel Intel changes all the time because there are so many moving parts below the surface, you know, there are secrets and counter secrets and maneuvers and counter maneuvers. So it's not as easy. Of course, they like the idea of being able to predict, but it doesn't work, you know. Claire was thinking, oh, it's like a crystal ball that tells us the future and that's just how it is. It isn't because there is no future, is there? So it doesn't matter what you put in front of me. You can't predict anything really. You can't predict everything. You can only predict what you're going to make happen. Then you're like, yeah, I'm making this happen. This is happening. <laughs> they have a way of explaining things. I love it. All right. So here I have a couple of answers to personal questions I had, but I took out the parts that weren't relevant you know, or interesting. Would have, been, would have not been interesting to anybody but me. And I left some parts, a couple of parts here that actually thought I thought were interesting because they were explaining something that I think many people might be going through. So Claire, so will Claire entertain more children on New Earth? Because they said we're going to live like we can live thousands of years. So I was wondering, we're going to have more children. Me. So at some point, she might want to have that experience because it's going to be a different experience. We're going to pretend it is similar to here for sentimental reasons. We're not going to give birth through our bodies like we do or we like to do here. It's not going to be the same process, but it's going to be in some way similar because we do want to, we retain, we connect, we relate to this experience the way that it was here. So I just thought this was interesting because they've told us before, we're not gonna give birth in the terms that we, we think of as giving birth here, but I was curious as to how you know, it could happen. Carolyn, you said that Claire's grandmother is not incarnated. So I lost my grandmother, I don't know, 30 years ago in 86, so a long time ago. Did you mean that she's in the matrix, but not embodied or that she's in the 25th? And so they said that she's in the 25th, but they also said that we can connect. And this is why I left this in here, because I don't know how it works in the 25th if we have individual memories. So here was Carolyn's question. Will they have their individual memories? Me. We do remember. We know everything. There is no veil. In the 21st dimension, we know everything. In fact, everybody knows everything. And they were laughing because, you know, it almost sounds like a gossiping, a gossipy town. Everybody knows everything. Carolyn, so she would know Claire? Me. Yeah, she would. If Claire connected, she would. Just like anybody else who would connect with her from a different incarnation in a different experience she had in the matrix. And I wanted to leave this in here because many of us may have had a person that we loved go back to the 25th. And the beauty of this is that when we go to New Earth, we'll be able to connect with them. So I loved my grandmother, and I know I'm not the only one <laughs> uh, that might have had this experience. So I just thought it was good news. Carolyn, 
you've told us that my family pets, again, and they're referring to mine, uh, uh, Clea's family pets will go with my mother and brother when they get picked up by the aliens. But you said that if my mom and brother are in Thailand in June, this is when they will be picked up. Or will their pets who are in Italy be able to join them on the trip, on the ship? I wanted to say this because again, it explains to us how the logistics of people being picked up by aliens work. And basically the question here is, I, we were supposed to go to Thailand. And so I was wondering, because my mother and brother are supposed to be picked up by the aliens and their pets are as well. So I was wondering, how's that gonna work if the pets are at home in Italy and they're in a different place. So here's the explanation, me. So the pets would also be picked up so that they will, would they would have, because they're gonna be in Italy at this point, because we are not going to Thailand anymore. So they're all going to be picked up at the same time. What would happen is that there will be ships picking up people everywhere. And so, and they know, they know where souls belong. And this is part of the logistics that we've set up. And so they would reunite them. But basically they would be in this case, it's a moot point because they're not going to Thailand anymore. But that's what would have happened. It would have been different ships picking them up. There's gonna be ships in an area and they're gonna pick up everybody who is in that area. While the NPCs won't even see these ships, the people who are supposed to see them, they will see them and they will be picked up, including the pets. So basically it doesn't matter where you are, you're still gonna get picked up. Um, and, uh, and not only you're going to get picked up, but you're going to be reunited. So you can ask, and I don't know if they say that here, I might've taken that out because again, it was part of personal questions, but basically I'm telling you, uh, you know, just reporting what they said, which is once they pick you up, they'll reunite you, they'll re reunite you. They, they know, uh, and you can ask, you can ask, you can say, because Transportation is not as difficult as we have it here. It's not a big deal, okay? So you can say, hey, I have to go pick up my dog and they will take you. All right. So, all right. So we're going to final messages here. And, uh, and I'm leaving a little bit of the final message they had for me because again, I think it's, uh, it's important. I think it's, it can be relevant for, for some of you. Thank you for all this information that you share with us today and answering all of Cleo's questions. Any final messages for Cleo? Don't worry too much about whether, so this was the answer from the 25th. Don't worry too much about whether you're gonna see aliens or not see aliens. Just think of what you would like to experience. So if you want to go hang out with your parents, focus on that, go hang out in a normal way. You don't need to be watching out or expecting any aliens, do your thing. Come back by airplane, normal experience. You will never ever get to do this again. And so enjoy it while it lasts. Just, yeah, you don't need to be always in a different dimension. And again, they were referring to the fact that if I stay there long enough, I will see my mother and brother being picked up. But they're saying, do you really want to see that? And I, and I truly don't. I, <laughs> I just want this 3D experience to feel 3D because again, we're never going to have this again. And so that's what they were saying. So this is why I left this in here. There might be many of you out there who are so focused on these other things that are happening behind the scenes, but we have so little time left here. Uh, basically, they're telling us, enjoy it. You know, uh, enjoy, believe that you're here fully like we used to before we got all this information and, uh, and let's enjoy, you know, the last moments in a very 3D way. Carolyn, thank you for that. Any final messages for Carolyn? And I did clear this with her, just so you know. <laughs> because I just want to make sure she's okay with this. And she said that it was okay to share because again, uh, there's kind of a universal message here. I think many of us are, are doing this. So uh, any final messages for Carolyn? Me. Carolyn, we see that you're still making plans as in like long-term plans. Like you think we're going to be here for a long time. Like, you know, financially or that kind of thing. So it's okay. It's perfectly okay. We know that you don't have to believe in that this is going to happen. Claire didn't believe until very recently. This is perfectly okay. But we would, the only reason we bring this up is because you would be better served doing something that has completely no long-term plan for it. And you're just doing it because it gives you pleasure in the here and now. So I think this is self-explanatory. Self <clears throat> Carolyn, I agree. Any final messages for the 12,000? Me. Yeah, so you guys are done and they were laughing. So we're just waiting, hanging out now. You're done. 
you're, you've done everything. There is nothing for you to do. This is, I mean, it's already finished. So we're just waiting for the aliens to come pick up, up our brothers and sisters. And then we're out of here. Yeah. So enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. We want you to enjoy. <laughs> Carolyn, enjoy. Okay. Any final message for humanity at large? Me. It's been a wild ride, but here we are. And you will understand. You will understand why this has been done. You will understand why it needed to be done. Just give it time. And don't be scared because we are powerful. We are masters, whether you want to remember that or not. So don't be scared. We got this. You are not a victim. You chose all of this. Carolyn. Final message for the aliens who are listening for the multiverse at large. The 25th told me that aliens are listening. So I'm like, all right, aliens, listen up. <laughs> me. <clears throat> so we are waiting for you guys laughing. And Claire would like to see a little ship here and there, but not too big and not too scary. Because the truth is, I think I would be freaked out. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, maybe a little bit, maybe from far away. I don't know. <laughs> And Carolyn interjects and she goes, and Carolyn too, actually. <laughs> Me. And Carolyn would like to see it too. So don't be so stealthy all the time. And they were laughing. No, we do want to thank you. We are very, very grateful that you're allowing us to take care of our fellow brothers and sisters. And we know you will do an amazing job. They will be very happy with you. And because of you, you're allowing them into your homes. You're treating them like revered guests and you are going to take care of them and want them to be happy. We are so grateful for this. These are our families. These are our loved ones. And we just want to express that. We will not forget. We will not forget what you have done. And you earth is always open to you. Come, come hang out. I thought this was very touching and very, very true. Carolyn, fabulous. <laughs> Any last words of wisdom that you want to share with us? me. We don't want to start talking about the future beyond this. We are so focused on this right now. However, there is what we can refer to as a future. You might think because we're all focused on this right now, you might think this is it. This is the biggest thing ever, which it is. It is in many ways. This is a very special occurrence, and it's exciting to be witnessing it and to be seeing it at this time. At the same time, though, you have so much to look forward to. There is so much to look forward to. There is so much more. Your lives, your existences will be just one exciting thing after the other from now on. You're not going to have the boredom that you had here on this planet because you couldn't move anymore. The rules were so tight that you were tied. Your hands were tied. You're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to be so excited that you get to step into this new reality. So this was all worth it. We would like you to remember this. Carolyn, thank you for that. Thank you for your presence here, sharing this knowledge with us. I'm always a little blessed and overwhelmed all at the same time, just to be reminded of who we are. It's always fascinating to me. Thank you for being here and answering Clea's questions. She's always so inquisitive and I love being here with her. If there is nothing else for you to impart on us, I will bring her out. Me, yes. So I wanted to close uh, with this, with, uh, with uh, Carolyn's comment, because I think we all feel, you know, or at least I'll speak for myself. I definitely feel both excited and sometimes overwhelmed <laughs> by all this information. But it's all good. There is so much to be grateful for. And I, and I truly am for so many things that have transpired in my life, despite the hard times. I don't think any of us can look back and say, I had all the most wonderful life. And yet, somehow, here we are. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate being able to share this with you. And uh, I hope to see you again in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.